Okay, so we've got the MTT data. Uh, we calculated an average and a standard deviation for each treatment group. Uh, highlight your averages. Insert, column, pick the top left. I want to now add in the standard deviations. So go to layout, error bars, more error bar options, custom. specify value and then highlight your standard deviations click OK close and then we've got the standard deviations on the graph can get rid of that you now want to add in your axes so right click on the graph select data Oh, at this point we can add in the horizontal axis labels so that would be those so we've now got our 0 to 20% on the bottom we can go up to uh, chart title so I always go for effect of X on Y as determined by Z You can figure out what X, Y, and Z are, but that's the title. Uh, and that title works for almost everything. If we go to Axis Titles, Primary Vertical, Rotated, this would be ABS 570 nanometers. Horizontal Axis, that would be Fiddle Car Serum. And then I right click on the graph, go move chart and put it as a new sheet. So now it appears down here. Imagine if you're going to copy this into a Word document, you'd be much better off having larger text. So when you copy it out, everything's nicely proportioned. And then I just get rid of those, just delete those. And you've got a, a nice looking graph. Okay, so that's your MTT data. Your flow cytometry data is a bit more complicated because you've got G1S and G2M. So we can highlight three series, go to insert column. In fact, don't do it that way, that's wrong. Highlight your three standard deviations for your control. Insert column, standard graph like this right click and go to select data add a series and this is going to be your plus FCS highlight your data values which is that one probably that that one the one that's hidden behind your graph so I just need to cancel that and move the graph out of the way so I'll repeat that so right click on the graph select data, add a series, plus FCS, series values are my FCS ones which is that one, that one, and that one. So we've now got a two series graph. Uh, we can edit these. Okay, and then we can rename series one. by editing it and just call it control. So we've got now got a nice pretty graph showing that data. So that's your flow cytometry data and then you can add in your error bars exactly as before. By clicking on your standard deviations So that's done one series and repeat the process for the next series.
So we've got a nice pretty graph there. Uh, and we'll move that to a new sheet. And again, let's put the, uh, make the size nice. Okay, so you've got a nice graph there. Final graph is just your cell counts. So this is number of cells in a flask without fetal car serum plus fetal calf. And I've taken class data from last week. So it's just a standard graph like that. You can add in your error bars yourself. So you've now seen how to do that. Okay, so next thing to do is do stats on this data, which is your MTT data. So we can copy that out and open Stats Direct. Open up a new data workbook and we can just dump the data in there. So this is your naught 20%. Now the data is either parametric or non-parametric unless you've tested uh, whether it's uh, non-parametric or pa uh, whether it's normally distributed or not. You can assume it's not and do a Kruskal Wallace test on this, which is what I'm going to do. So go to analysis, non-parametric Kruskal Wallace test, run the multiple comparisons, and what we can see is which comparables are, which ones are significant, which ones are not. So I can copy that into my original Excel file, just so I know what's going on. So, but what we're saying is basically A compared to B is not significant. A compared to C, okay, on my other spreadsheet, A was B and so on. But this compared to this, which is A and B, is not significant, whereas this is significant. A and D, which is that versus that, is significant and the 1% and the 20% is also significant. So we can assign significant stars. So that would be one star because it's P is less than 0 0.05 and that would be three stars because P is less than 0 0.001. And we can put these significant stars on the graph, which is here. So that is not significant, but you can just insert a text box. So insert a text box from up here. So we just put one star there. And then insert text box with three stars up here. And then repeat the process up here. So that's basically doing a Kruskal Wallace on this data. If it was normally distributed, which you can test for in Stats Direct by doing the normality test, then you could do a ANOVA instead. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to the cell cycle data, which is this data. Now you can, you want to, you can compare everything if you want to, but what's interesting to me is whether G1 phase is greater in the control versus fetal calf. So we're just going to compare these values to these values. In, so we're going to put that data into Stats Direct. So put all of this data in. Okay, and I'm just going to do a comparison of these two columns. Now, because this is percent data, by definition, it's not normally distributed, so it's going to be a non-parametric test, and it's a paired test. 
So we'll go to non-parametric and it's a man Whitney. That's the non-parametric version of a t-test. So we can click on that and we have a readout in the man Whitney data that says that using a two-sided test, because we didn't know whether it's going to be increased or not, uh, so we're, we're testing whether these effectively are different rather than whether one's higher than the other, uh, we've got a p-value of 0 0.0079. Okay, so that is, so p is less than 0 0.001, so that would be three stars. So on the graph, we can insert a text box with three stars and just to be clear making it clear that that is linking those two bars that this is significantly higher than this okay and the last bit of data analysis that you could do is if you've got class data for your entire group you could compare these versus these so this is your cell counts, number of cells per flask. Uh, and we can do that by a simple t-test. This is not percent data, it's likely to be normally distributed, and you could test for that in stats direct. But we're just going to do a simple t-test. So type equals, go up to here, or search for t-test. So more functions, scroll down to t-test. Array 1 is your control data, Array 2 is your fetal calf serum data. Let's have a two-tailed test and it's a paired test and your p-value is 0 0.0013 so that's less than 0 0.01 so that would be two stars on your significance uh, graph so you could put those two stars on this graph to show that this is significantly higher than this. Okay, so that's pretty much as much data analysis as you need to do and that's the explanation for why you're using particular tests. If you want to do a normality test to see if the data is normal or non-normally distributed, highlight your column of data points, go to analysis, go to uh, parametric normality and there's a suggestion there that there's no no non-normality suggesting that it is indeed normal uh, but if in doubt just use a non-parametric version of the test um, otherwise if you use a parametric version your stats are going to be overestimating whether it's significantly different or not okay so that's probably everything you need to know to do your data analysis on your cell biology lab.